Hey guys, although this, this class is not on the books as a blended learning class, uh, I told you we would be employing some of these blended learning principles, and this is going to be one of them. So we're going to go through this PowerPoint. Um, it's going to have a little, few questions along the way, and then you can just get to work on your activities. So uh, let's take a look at it. This is identifying the things that we're going to see uh, inside the uh, random number generator uh, or throughout the course uh, that are analog. Um, so first thing is, is some resistors. Uh, we're going to talk about their resistance in terms of ohms. And those resistances um, aren't necessarily determined by uh, the size of the resistor. Um, it, it's determined or it's, it's listed by bands on the resistor themselves. So here are at least three of the ones that we'll see this year. Uh, these uh, four band carbon film ones. We've got some five bands. We won't actually use those, but you might run across one. Uh, potentiometers like you saw in PoE. That's that knob that's going to give you a variable resistance. And finally some surface mount resistors which are really really tiny and have to be uh, soldered onto a, bread, uh, a PCB, a printed circuit board, uh, by a, you know, automation by some type of robotics tree. Um, so those we won't actually use but you may see some. Um, like I said the size of a resistor doesn't actually determine its value. It's those uh, stripes, those colored coded uh, symbols on there. Um, the size is more indicative of the amount of power that it can withstand. Um, so this one on here on top probably can take more power than the one down here on the bottom. Doesn't mean that it's it's supplying more ohms or resistance, just that it can take probably a little bit more power. Uh, we will show you how to use the DMM to, to read those values. Uh, the one main thing is you cannot read uh, resistance when you have power flowing through the system. It doesn't read it correctly. Um, so there is a color code. Uh, that color code um, you read from left to right with the very right side being um, either gold or silver and or non-existent. Um, and if it's not existent, you'll be able to tell very easily because all the, the bands will be kind of shifted over to one side. So uh, if we leave them, read them left to right, we can see that there's actually a couple of resistors here that are the wrong direction. This this turquoise one, we need to flip around because we can see that, that on the very left-hand side, that's gold. Same here with the second one down. Um, we have gold there. So those need to be flipped around in order to read it properly. Let's uh, try one. So our first band is brown, second band is, is black, and our third band is is red. So why don't you try? For that first band, we have a 1. For the second band, black, that's a 0. And for our multiplier, we have a 100, or 10 times 100, or a 1,000 ohms. But we're not going to write it like that. We're going to write it as 1 kilo ohm. Let's try again. So the first band is orange, so that's going to be a 3. Second band, white, that's a 9. Our multiplier is 100k, so we're taking 39 multiplying by 100k, so we get 3,900 thousand ohms of resistance, which you can simplify down to 3.9 mega ohms of resistance. We can go the other way, so if we want a 1.5k resistor with 5% uh, tolerance, plus or minus, uh, well, we're going to want a 1 first brown. We're going to want a 5 second for green. And then what are we going to want for that third resistor, or for that third band? Yeah, red. So um, what we have here is 1,500 ohms of resistance. It's 1.5k, 1 but 1,500 ohms of resistance. And that last one is, of course, gold. Uh, we're going to take a look at some capacitors. Uh, those use uh, farads as their units. Um, you'll see uh, pretty much all of these throughout the year. Um, the top row is ceramic disc capacitors, and the flow of electricity doesn't matter through those. Uh, there's no positive, there's no negative side. They have a symbol that just looks kind of like the battery symbol, again, because they're very related. And then we have some electrolytic capacitors. Those matter the flow of electricity, and they're generally labeled. Um, so you've got a long leg, that's going to be your positive edge, and you've got a short leg for your, your negative edge. There's also a stripe that, that is on the negative edge side of, of 
this type of uh, capacitors. On the other side for these axial lead ones, there's actually arrows that show you the flow. Now remember, we're using conventional flow, so it's going from positive to negative. Um, again, we have some surface mount ones. Those are, we're not actually going to use, but you know you can see them on a, a printed circuit board if you opened up something that was uh, small. How to read them. With the electrolytic ones, those are very, very easy. Uh, they are just uh, 10... You just read them straight off the the side. So here we have 10 microfarads. There's no tolerance listed, so we're just going to assume it's to, uh, plus or minus 20%. Second one here, we're reading at 0.47 microfarads, and then it's again it's plus or minus 20%. Uh, for the most part, electrolytic electrolytic capacitors uh, are listed in microfarads. For ceramic disc capacitors, though, those are uh, listed in picofarads, and we have to decode them in order to be able to read and, and tell what they are. So for this one, our first digit represents our first. Um, figure our, our second digit is going to be our second one and that third one is actually about the number of zeros that we have so for this one we have 42 or 4700 I should say um, farads or pico farads and then that last letter it's not 472,000 it's 4700 uh, pico farads that K corresponds to our tolerance and you see here it's plus or minus 10%. So let's try one on your own. What do you get for this one? So remember this is in picofarads. So we're going to have a 3 and a 3 with one zero or 330 picofarads plus or minus 5% for that J. One more time, try this one. So yeah, you're going to have a 1, a 0, then three more zeros or 10,000 picofarads with the K plus or minus 10%. Here are a couple of other uh, components that you're going to see throughout the year. You've already seen LEDs. Uh, this is a seven segment display for displaying uh, numbers. We'll control those later in the year, second semester specifically. Uh, we've got a fuse. There's one inside your DMM. Uh, those are going to help you. Those are what you've blown up in most of them, uh, but it's going to help uh, preserve the device. A diode going to help control the flow of electricity. I think we only really see those once or twice throughout the year. And a voltage regulator. Again, same thing. It's going to make sure that voltage uh, stays below a certain level. Um, and we'll see that once or twice throughout the year.